Hello and welcome once again to starting problems on the starter motor and other related topics to it. Um, as you can see the ignition switch, this is a schematic obviously that we dealt with before. In the start position, that's when we crank the starter. Your ignition switch before that, you are in the run position. In the run position, in this position, this let's put it in the green. In the green in this position, the run position, before you are engaging the starter or giving voltage to the starter, you're in the run position. What does that do? That gives the voltage and the computer will give the ground to the fuel pump to turn on the fuel pump. Now the fuel pump will be turned on and it'll give the proper fuel pressure. So the fuel pressure would already exist in the line. Then once you go into start, into start, then you are engaging the starter motor to the flywheel, to the crankshaft, to turn it on with the fuel already in the line and then you're already engaging the crankshaft and the engine to turn. So. A lot happens before you go into the start position, as we said. Now, we go over here, we go over here, and we go through this. Let's go through this topic by topic. We go through a park neutral switch. What does that mean? We have to be either in the park position or in a neutral position. Either one. We cannot be in reverse. We cannot be in manual one or two or three. We have to be either in park or neutral. So if you ever have problems starting the car in the park position, guess what? Obviously, you could go to the neutral position and see if it starts in a neutral position. If it starts in a neutral position, you know you have a problem with the park neutral position switch. So here's the current flowing through a, a, a crank fuse. That's 10 amps. That's in the fuse block. Now we come over here. Now we come again to a relay, a starter relay. Okay, this starter relay, as we can see, one side is connected to ground, a physical, physical ground. G means a physical ground in the diagram. The other side is what? The 12 volts. Now, question is, when does this activate over here? So the starter relay, the contacts over here, the armature, this coil is magnetized, pulling in the contacts. Now this switch will be closed, so 30 will be co connected to terminal 87. These are the terminals, terminal 30, terminal 87. So let, before we get to that, let's come over here. Let's come over here. Where's the battery? The battery is right here. So the battery going through this red wire will go through what? A fuse. Rated at 175 amps. That's a big fuse, ain't it? Well, this diagram does not contain all the other circuits that it's connected to. Ignition coil, fuel injectors, all kinds of valves, actuators, solenoids. So there's a lot of current, but it's being dis distributed among other circuits. So whatever is over here, cannot be more than 40 amps so if you have 175 let's say 160 amps or whatever going on just 100 amps might be going here 40 amps might be going here and that's it regardless of that once this is activated this is closed and what should we get here 12 volts here and 12 volts wire at the starter position terminal 87 okay over here when we come to the solenoids, there are two of them, one to hold in, one to pull in. We have to have 12 volts at the solenoids over here. If this is activated, we'll get the 12 volts. If this fuse is good, we'll get the 12 volts. If this fuse is good over here, we'll get 12 volts. If this wire is intact and not open, we'll get 12 volts. If this wire is good, we'll get 12 volts. So once you get 12 volts over here, what does it tell you? It tells you this is activated. That means what? Park neutral switch is good. Ignition switch is good because in the start position, we have 12 volts here. What else is good? Crank fuse is good. 
One, two, three. Three components are known to be good, how? When I measure 12 volts here. When I measure zero volts over here, what does it tell me? There's 12 volts across where? Across here. What does that tell you? That tells me there's a voltage drop of 12 volts across this coil. Is this coil being activated? Yes, it is. Now, we just said 12 volts across here. What did this teach me? Battery is good. Fuse is good. Number one. Fuse number two is good. So that's why I got 12 volts over here. What does this tell me over here, this 12 volts? This 12 volts tells me this is good. This is the main point when you measure 12 volts over here. If you measure 12 volts over here, over here, it tells you, again, one good, one, this is good, this is good, ignition switch is good, this is good, and this is good. And if there would be a computer giving around, this would also be good. So therefore, it tells you, when you go to this point, as I always, always mention, leave the relay inside. Don't take out the relay to measure anything. You won't measure anything anyway if you take out the relay in this, or at this terminal. You'll only measure 12 volts here, 12 volts over here. That's it. Keep the relay inserted. Now, how do I know that this is working? This is the thick line going to the starter motor. This is the one that's pulling all the amps. So on the starter, you could be put without a load. You could pu you could pull about 100 amps, 120 amps, something like that. When you have a load on it, what's the load? The flywheel, the engine, everything. That's putting a load on it. So when you put a load on it, you're gonna you might be pulling 300 amps, 400 amps, depending in the winter more. That's when you need the cold cranking amps. Now, the most, the most accurate thing is when you have it in the car. If you're going to take this starter motor out and say, you know what, I think it's a starter problem. I'm going to give it to AutoZone. AutoZone is going to test it for me. AutoZone is going to take it and test it and say, starter is good. No problem with the starter. But that's because they didn't have the load on it. They didn't have no engine on it. You put it back in the car, the one that they told you was good, guess what? Still, it doesn't work. That's because it's not an accurate test. The accurate test is when you have a load. Just like you have a load on a battery, you put a load over here. Now, the starter motor has pinion gear, right? That's making contact to the ring gear and then making contact to the crankshaft. They're not spinning at the same speed. Remember, there's a smaller gear on the pinion gear. The teeth, what I'm trying to refer to, is, is much less than obviously... This is the pinion gear with all the teeth around it, and this is the ring gear. And then you have the crankshaft going to this. This is the crankshaft over here. What are you going to have? This one will be turning at a speed much more than this one. Why? Because this is smaller. This will create more turns. So 15 to 20 to 1, meaning this pinion gear of the starter motor, known as the pinion gear, might be turning 15 times to turn this one time. That's what the ratio means, 15 to 1 or 20 to 1. 20 revolutions of this small pinion gear of the starter motor will give me one revolution of this ring gear. That's a lot to expect from the starter motor, isn't it? Therefore, the RPM is about 200 RPM of this. What you need is the torque, enough torque to turn that crankshaft. That's why you need a ring gear. Now, how am I going to know if this is if the starter motor is intact? Well, as you've seen in, in many, many videos that I made, I always put something called the clamp meter. However, the clamp meter in this case needs to be high current. Why? Why do I say that? Because you're going to extract, this starter motor is going to extract a lot of current when that engine is engaged and turning. And then the fuel injectors are giving the fuel. Air, air fuel ratio is, is being compressed, increasing the pressure, increasing the temperature, better compression. And then obviously that's when that's when everything is engaged. Now, where's the wire? The thick wire. This is the thick wire that you always see. This is the starter motor thick wire all the current the high current will be through here you can see it it's the thick wire that i always showed you in the videos the red one now what am i going to do 
guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this clamp around it, like I did in the videos, around this wire. And I'm going to crank the, crank the engine, turn on the ignition switch. When I turn the ignition switch in the starting position, if I see 300, 400 amps, and look at the rating of this one, you have to have a high rated one. This is 400 amps. This can go up to 600 volts. DC or 400 amps. Sometimes you need even more than 400 amps in the winter. So if I get 400 amps, what does that tell me? Or 300 amps or 250 amps. What does that tell me? Does that tell you that your starter is engaged, that the starter motor is good? Absolutely, because how? what's the only thing that can crank that much current? The starter motor. So I, let's say I cannot get to this position over here to measure 12 volts. It's a, in a hard position. What am I going to do? I'm going to take a meter, a clamp meter, put it around that, and measure the current. If I don't measure any current, what does that tell you? That tells you the starter motor is not engaged. Does it have 12 volts? Even if you have 12 volts at this point, that doesn't necessarily mean that the starter motor is bad. Not necessarily. You can have a ground wire with high resistance, also a problem. But this, that I always use, this will give you an indication right away if I'm pulling a lot of current. The only thing in this diagram that can pull a lot of current is the starter motor being engaged to the flywheel, being engaged to the crankshaft. It's the only thing. Okay? If I don't pull any current... This meter tells me I have no current being pulled. Then I'm going to work my way around here. And where am I going to go? I'm going to go right here to this point that I always tell you in every single video. I choose this point at 87 terminal over here in the starter relay. Go to the channel Joe Electronics Math for Auto and you see so many videos which I tell you how to measure it in circuit by putting a wire in the terminal and measuring the relay. Do not take out the relay. You have to measure with the load. Everything has to be measured with the load. Starter motor with the load. Relay with the load. Battery with the load. Everything has to be measured with the load. So if I go over here and I measure 12 volts, what does that tell you right away? After 12 minutes of this video that I've been describing, it tells you park neutral switch is good. Tells you ignition switch is good. Tells you what? Tells you this is good. The ground is good. This is good. What am I left with? Now I'm left with a possibility. A possibility of a starter solenoid or a starter motor problem. That could be the problem also. Or the wire of a high voltage drop across the wire or anything like that. Of course, you should always measure zero volts across this wire. You should not measure 0.5 volts or anything like that. Very low voltage at these wires. But anyway, between here and here, as I showed you in the videos, you should measure maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts, maybe that much. I you go for zero volts. If you measure 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volts, that's too much of a voltage drop across this wire. You cannot afford to have that much at 400 amps or 300 amps or whatever you are draining okay so again the best way to measure it in conclusion is with the clamp meter put the clamp meter on find the thick wire tell your friend to crank the engine see if you get any amps over here if you get 200 amps 300 amps chances are you know what your starter motor is turning and it's turning the flywheel and it's turning the crankshaft you might have a crank and no start you might think that it, instead it is a no crank and a no start problem, which is not the case. It is a crank and no start. You might have a fuel problem or a spark problem, compression, whatever, but it's a different problem. So anyway, go to my channel, Joe Electronics Schematic for Auto, and please subscribe if you like this. More videos and more hands-on when I get the chance. You'll see everything, but you'll see the hands-on. Go to the channel that I described. Thanks for watching.